What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys have had a great weekend. Mine's been fairly productive. You know, I got the pool finished up last week and uh, the kids have been enjoying that in our nice hot weather. Um, I'm going to use degrees again, even though I got hammered in the comments about uh, us lousy Americans and our non-metric system, but uh, it's been up in the high 90s and it's pretty hot. And I'll tell you what, I will start looking at converting to Celsius and Kelvin or something along those lines, um, just at least for this view, maybe if that's what people like to see. But you know, hey, I'm an American and that's what we use. Uh, I know we're one of the only countries, but <laughs> that's kind of a side note, so I digress on that. Um, I wanted to get this video out because I'm nearing the end of my challenge on NixOS slash Hyperland. Um, I have some thoughts, uh, some good, some bad. Um, well, I shouldn't say bad. Um, overall, it was a very uh, nice experience, a, an interesting experience. Um, but I do have some stuff that um, just kind of, I guess, would have to go in a quote unquote negative column if I'm doing columns. <laughs> but, um, and uh, for starters, you're going to be looking at my face a little bit because so, I'm trying some scenes and stuff in OBS because that's one thing I did solve. Um, I know my last video I said that um, I was having issues with OBS, but I did resolve those issues. So um, we're going to try some scenes. We're going to try and dress up our videos here a little bit and uh, make them look a little more professional. And, you know, so. Let's start off with a couple things I want to get off of uh, my chest out in the air, get, get them out in the open. Um, first off, I do have memberships available on YouTube, um, and I do have uh, Buy Me A Coffee if you want to help support the channel. Uh, by no means do I enjoy or want to feel like I'm begging for money for you guys because that's not, um, that's not the case. Um, I did have some people request um, a way to support me, and they've, uh, they've shown up, and they've, they've done just that. But I want to put it out there that I in no way, shape, or form am doing this to uh, get money from you guys. Um, being paid by YouTube is great. You know, it is it is a little supplement for what I do. Um, but I am in no way, shape, or form doing this to take money from you guys. So I am really coming to the conclusion that um, if you've watched Josh Lee's channel at all, um, you'll know he put a little blurb out saying that he'd have nothing behind paywalls. And I'm really starting to mess around with that idea of... Um, just making these uh, memberships and stuff available to you, um, not expecting anybody to use them. But if you feel so led to uh, help support the channel, then by all means. But I really don't want to hide anything behind money. I don't want to feel like I'm charging people for something that I enjoy doing and something that I feel could be helping people or just doing something that people enjoy. Um, so by no means do I want anybody to feel like they have to donate to see all of my content. So. Um, I might take down the members only community posts. I've only done a few um, and just kind of leave it at, hey man, if you want to help, great. But don't ever think you have to, to be able to have access to any of my content. Um, I know some people think, oh, if I pay, you know, I can get access and I can have perks and this and that. And while that's all well and good, I just feel bad. Um, if I say I'm an open source advocate and free software advocate and all this stuff, um, I feel bad just kind of saying, hey, you know, I am all that, but if you want to see some of this extra stuff, you're going to have to pay for it. So from here on out, I believe there's going to be no paywall for anything. I am going to put everything out to the open. If you feel so led to help support the channel, great. Do not feel like you have to. I've said before, um, the greatest thing that you can offer me um, as a way of support is prayers. And, uh, you know, that's, that's still the truth. Um, you know, I'm monetized through YouTube, so I do get a little bit of money through YouTube for this, which helps out. And you know that's all that's all there is to it. So spiel over. I'm sorry I didn't want to um, take that on that long, but uh, I just want you guys to know I really appreciate your viewership, your comments, your likes, subscribes, shares, all that stuff, and your prayers especially. If you do feel so led to help me monetarily, great. If not, nothing is going to be hidden from you guys. Um, everything I do will be free and available to you. So let's go ahead and get into my thoughts on. NixOS and Hyperland. So let's go ahead and switch to a different scene here. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to switch it up with scenes on OBS and stuff. So we're, we're working with things here a little bit. We're trying to become a little more, little more uh, professional looking. I have this ugly face on there for you so you can, uh, I don't know, throw darts at it or <laughs> make comments, whatever you want to do. Um, not that you throw darts at your computer screen, but you know, anyway, um, I digress. Here is my setup. Um, as you can see, I've changed it a little bit. Um, and I've changed the background, the wallpaper, the way the bar is set up, the shape of the bar. Way bar is a pretty cool bar. It's actually got a lot of customization to it and it allows for a lot of uh, tweaks and changes due to the fact that it's um, 
basically configured and styled through CSS, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm not super comfortable with CSS. I know enough to get myself in trouble. Um, so I do know enough to actually make my bar look halfway decent. In my opinion, you might think this is a hideous, ugly, horrible mess, but uh, I actually thought it looked pretty good, uh, especially with the wallpaper, the color schemes. I like the kind of muted colors. Um, so it really turned out nice. Um, if we go ahead and launch a terminal, um, you can see I changed my border color on my window. It's still the 180 degrees, but I changed it from um, the gray color or the bluish color over to the yellow. If I launch another window, you can see my active window is the yellowy color and then the inactive window is more of the gray blue color. So um, I did change that up a little bit. Uh, let's CD into my Waybar configuration file here. And if we do an LS, you can see I've got CFG1, which was my messing around with config. Um, I have config right here, which is the main config. And then we have the style right here with style CSS. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here and clear the screen. Um, so let's first vim into style.css, not sy, st, um, and you can see right here, like I said, it's just a basic CSS file. Um, so we have some main uh, uh, information here, the border, border radius, uh, font family, stuff like that. Um, and then down here you have all the different uh, modules you can use. Uh, so we have like our workspaces button, workspaces button active and focused, um, urgent, uh, we have hover, so I, which I didn't set up because I think that's just kind of clicking on them doesn't work so I, I don't really understand the hover portion of it and why um, but anyway um, it's there so it's kind of set up I guess um, we have some lang um, different uh, modules here that you can use that I actually kind of stole this uh, configuration from somebody else FYI and just made some changes to it but uh, you can see we've got backlight set up here which is gonna be this guy right here that'll change my backlight um, you can uh, scroll and do all kinds of stuff on it to actually change the brightness um, we've got my tray, which is going to be right here. Workspaces are right here. Um, we've got, I don't know, custom caffeine and language. See, this is stuff from, uh, if you know his channel at all, this is Chris Titus Tech. I kind of took his design and kind of ran with it. So Chris Titus Tech, uh, thank you very much. Um, we have window radius here. we got clock. Um, the window I don't use. Um, that's basically telling you what is... Uh, what is in the active window. I don't really like that. It takes up a lot of real estate on the bar and just looks kind of sloppy in my opinion. But we have clock, we have network, um, I have pulse audio and pulse audio microphone. So I have my speakers here and my microphone here. Um, looks like the um, system mic is muted. Uh, so hopefully while I'm shooting this video, it's not muted the other one, but. Um, then I have battery. Um, you can see I used, instead of having a module for my um, uh, network, I did use uh, Network Manager Applet, which was nice because uh, it, it just allows to have a nice interface there for it. So I did use that. So if we go ahead and quit out of there and we then into config and hit enter, you can see this is where we kind of put in some of the basic descriptors or the basic um, uh, settings for each of the modules. Um, so we have like workspaces, WLR workspaces, disable scroll true, which means if I hover on it and I scroll with my mouse wheel or with my trackpad, it doesn't scroll. Um, persistent workspaces, um, we have icons for the tray, it gives you the icon size and the icon spacing. Uh, clock, you can do the format and you can put your um, icons in here. Uh, backlight, same thing. It's, it's, a lot, it's really similar to uh, something like Polybar, you know, it is polybar-esque in the way that things are configured is just um, styled with a CSS file. So that's my uh, way bar up here. So I thought that was kind of cool. So let's go ahead and quit out of there. Um, we also have a uh, uh, hyperland configuration. So if we CD into hyper and we vim into hyperland.conf, um, you can see again, I still haven't changed the uh, auto config. Uh, I just used the one that was auto generated and did some minor maintenance to it and changed some stuff. Um, all this stuff I went over last time for the resolution on the monitor. Um, we have the cursor size. I did change what I was able to do uh, because as you recall in the last video, I was having issues with key bindings for OBS working. Well, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, um, I guess Wayland and global key bindings don't play well. Um, so whatever compositor you're using, you basically have to run your global key bindings through that, which I did with Hyperland. So I have right down here, I have bind equals super P. And so that's going to pass um, the key binding into OBS. Well, then you also go into the section of OBS where you set your hotkeys and you actually set your hotkeys up in there. So you, they are what you want, but then you have to make sure you can make these set exactly the same. So I have super P set to play pause. I have um, Super R set to record and stop record. I have Super 1, 2, and 3 set to change scenes. Um, so basically I have those set up here in my hyperland.conf. 
and I also have those set up in OBS itself under the settings and hotkey menu. Um, so you do have to have both of those, I believe, otherwise uh, otherwise it won't work, it won't know what you're calling. But I was able to address that issue. I'm still struggling with the GTK issue. Um, there was a spot in the Nix OS wiki that talks about Sway and GTK, um, but I just couldn't get that functioning for me. So overall, I wanted to just kind of let you guys know what my thoughts were on Nix OS and on Hyperland. Um, and I don't know, I'm trying to make these so they don't overlap because I know they are two separate programs, um, two separate tools, and I don't want to lump something together from one that is caused by the other or vice versa. So we're gonna try and do this as easy as possible. But let's go ahead and close that out and let's go back to the other scene here. And Basically, what I would like to say about NixOS is NixOS is a great uh, uh, distribution. It is fantastic in the fact that you can really custom customize things down and build your system and have it stay that way. It is extremely reproducible. You can build your system once and basically just copy a Git repo and have your system completely up and working again, which is great for people like sysadmins, for people who um, are putting it on multiple computers, or even for people who just want to be able to, if they get a new machine, be able to just easily load their stuff up onto that uh, machine and be done with it and up and going. What NixOS is not good for, um, in my personal opinion, is guys like me. If you've watched my YouTube channel for any period of time, you know that I am a tinkerer. I like to mess with things. Um, I like to change things. My window manager changes, my configuration changes, my themes change, everything changes. And so every time I change something and I have to run that NixOS rebuild, one, it takes up more space. And Two, it's not just a simple, hey, I'm gonna rebuild my configuration file. You know, you, it's just, NixOS is for somebody who wants something that they can build once and have forever. And that's not my forte. I like to play around with things. I like to try out new things. I like to have multiple stuff on my machine and just nothing stays the same for very long on my machine. And so for guys like me who like to play around with their machine and play around with their configuration and, um, just change things quite often it's not very conducive to an environment like that in my personal opinion now i'm sure if you get into like home manager and stuff like that maybe that changes a little bit but i just don't see it as something that's a viable option for me until i'm done with my playing around phase i guess and who knows that might be never um, I, one of the greatest things i enjoy about linux is the ability to be able to change my distribution to be able to change my window manager to be able to change all this stuff as i please when i please and uh, NixOS is not built for that. NixOS is built for that stable, reproducible, get your machine back up and going as quick as possible exactly how it was. And that is a great selling point for a lot of people. I'm just not one of them. So win for NixOS and the fact that it is extremely reproducible, it's stable, it's a great distribution. The package management on it is great. There is so many packages. I don't think I found one package that I was looking for that I couldn't locate on there. Um, so that's well, that's all good. Um, the reproducible factor of it, um, just the fact that you can really tailor your machine or your system to your machine is, is great. The downside is I'm not a person who wants my machine the same forever. I want to be able to change things and change them and change them again and just keep changing them as long as I want and not have to worry about um, running commands to restore um, or to rebuild or all that stuff. I just like to be able to have what I want and blow it up and do something new. Um, so my system's const constantly changing. I don't need that complete reproducibility that NixOS offers. So for me personally, it just doesn't work. It's not something that I could see myself using long time. Now, as far as Hyperland goes, Hyperland is a awesome compositor. It is amazing it's got so much functionality to it it's got so many extras to it with the hyper ctl command um, you have stuff like hyper paper hyper picker for colors you've got so much going on with this thing that i really want to dive in more to this and i think after my challenge because i'm not going to run hyperland on debian i don't know if it will or not i'm not going to i'm going to go with debian i want to go with something a little older a little more established a little more stable just something that um, is just tried and true and so on Debian, I'm not going to do it. Um, I haven't decided. I might actually run it on Artix again, 
but uh, it kind of defeats the purpose of this challenge. Um, I was thinking about doing something like DK on Arctic, but we're still playing around with that. I might go with Hyperland again just because I want to see how it functions on Arch. Um, it was a bit of a struggle going for it on MixOS, uh, mostly on my part, not on the system's part, uh, but it did help me understand things a little better. And I think maybe if I go on the Arch side with it, I might get even a better picture and a better appreciation for what Hyperland can do. So I haven't decided yet, but I might run it on there. Uh, bad things about Hyperland, it didn't play real well with OBS. There were some issues that took me a little bit of time to figure out just because I'm coming from X over to Wayland and Wayland is a different beast. Um, so I don't know that I can necessarily place those on Hyperland itself, if it's a Hyperland issue or if it's a Wayland issue or what the deal is. But from my experience on this one, uh, playing with Hyperland um, was tricky at times, but a really cool, really uh, interesting window manager and experience. So the documentation on both of them, let's go ahead and open a browser here. And we are going to go to Nick's, uh, Nick's OS manual here. And actually let's go to the Nick's wiki. So let's do wiki.nixos, I think. Um, I might be wrong on that. Uh, yeah, nixos.wiki. Um, the documentation for NixOS is great. Um, you can go through and find just about anything you need in it. So it gets full marks for that. The documentation is, is pretty darn spectacular. Um, aside from Arch and Gen2, um, it's up there in the top uh, documentations that I have uh, come across and used. Um, now, that being said, the same thing goes for Hyperland. Um, Hyperland, the documentation that uh, is offered for Hyperland is extremely well laid out. It is extremely well done. Um, everything is broken down on the side here. And you can just, uh, there's so much you can do with it. And I think I'm on the wrong scene to be showing you guys this. So let's go ahead and switch back over here and see what happens there. But um, it's a really well documented uh, compositor, window manager, whatever you want to call it. I know it's not a window manager, but people are just hung up on that term, so including myself. Um, so it is definitely a well put together uh, document for Hyperland. So full marks for Hyperland as well on the documentation. It really lays it out for you how to do things and how to make things function for you. So overall, this was a good experience. Um, will I continue with NixOS? No, um, I won't. It's just not for me. It's not a distribution conducive to my computer usage. Um, will I continue with Hyperland? Yes, I will probably continue messing around with Hyperland. Um, whether it happens during this challenge or not, it remains to be seen. But um, it is something that I, can, I am tending to continue messing around with and actually learning um, and maybe possibly at some point switching to. We'll just have to see. Um, Herb's Luft is still my favorite window manager. Um, but uh, there's some other ones that are creeping up there, and this is definitely one of them. So that being said, that's kind of uh, what my thoughts are on this whole uh, challenge that um, I have undergone for the past month or so. Um, it might be a little short of a month. I'm not sure. I didn't actually mark down the exact date I started. But um, I believe I've taken enough time to actually sit down and get a really good idea of um, this system, how it works. I didn't get into stuff like Home Manager or Flakes or anything like that. Um, that wasn't the object of this. It was just kind of a introduction for me to this stuff to see if I could actually successfully live in it with little to no knowledge of how both of them work. And it worked. Um, I'm able to use my system and I'm able to uh, get around. I was able to find answers to the questions I had. Um, so it was what I will call a successful challenge. So. Um, Stay tuned, I will be starting up my Debian challenge next and uh, we will be covering uh, Debian 12. Um, I know there's a lot of that out there right now because this is Debian's new release and everybody and their brother decided to cover it. Um, but we're gonna cover it too because you know, that's I guess that's what we do, uh, us Linux YouTubers. Um, I'm kind of falling into the, into the uh, grind of um, following along with everybody else. I'm trying not to, but there's a few things that is probably gonna happen. So Debian 12 is one of them. I'm gonna take a look at it. I've never used a Debian, uh, a vanilla Debian distribution long-term. I used Mint for a while, but um, vanilla Debian is new to me. So we're gonna check it out. Um, we're gonna check it out with a, a tried and true window manager and we're gonna see what we think about it. So stay tuned. Um, if you've got any questions or comments or anything like that, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments, shoot me an email, however you wanna get them to me. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this challenge and, uh, I'll see you on the next one. All right. You guys have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your week. Stay safe. God bless.